But I want to talk about the difference between a son or a slave. Are you living as a son or are you living as a slave? And some time ago, actually quite a while, a year ago maybe, I was listening to a message by Miles Monroe on leadership. And he was talking to a group of, of, of people who at least desired to be leaders. They were leaders or else they desired to be leaders. And uh, they were uh, from Bahamas, I believe. I think that's where he was. And he was speaking to them. And he, he finally said, you guys are never going to be leaders. Well, that's a bit a pretty hard statement. It did finish it. You're never going to be a leader until you kick your slave mentality. And then he starts going down over a list of things that he said slaves believe and how slaves think. And as he's going over this list, I'm sitting there thinking, wow, I should be talking to me and my background people. And I kept having to catch myself, oh no, he's not talking to me, he's talking to slaves. I was never a slave. He's talking to slave people with slaves. That was their that was their ancestors. But it kept it resonated in me so deeply. It just it just kept speaking to me. And I said, Why in the world is he speaking to me? What what why am I connecting to this so deeply? So it dawned after looking at this, I began to realize Anabaptists in the 1500s, their experience. Um, I believe has influenced where this group is today and the way we think, the way we act, the way we live. And uh, their, their persecution, the deaths, the persecution that they experienced is still affecting the way we think and live today. Just as the persecution of the slave, um, I should say just as, but similar to, I'm not trying to compare the two, but I'm, I'm trying to compare the results. The mindset of a slave. The mindset of the slave, because of what happened, the death, the torture, and the persecution, the families being ripped apart, people living in extreme poverty, um, caused a slave mentality over God's people, is what I believe. Similar to slaves. And uh, let's look at what a slave is. A human slave and law based religious followers can have the same slave mindset. Have the same slave mindset. If you cannot fully live in the new man, the man that God created you to live in, you are probably stuck in a slave mindset mentality somewhere in your life. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's why I said we pledge allegiance to the Lamb. We're going to give our life for Him. That means here on this earth, in my mind, that means here on this earth while we're living, not once we've died. Are we able to give our life for him on a daily basis, dying to the old man and living with Christ on this earth? That's what we're supposed to be doing. That's how we're supposed to live. Free from sin, free from all that stuff, and alive with Christ daily, going forward, living like that. However, there are mindsets, I believe slave mindsets, that keep us from going forward. And I, I just did a little bit of research. The Anabaptist execution started started in 1527, and it went to 1614. These are approximate dates. And the persecution continued all the way up to the 1700s. Then, slavery in the USA originated approximately, approximately 1619. So, Anabaptist persecution, the last execution was in 16, so we know, in 1614. Slavery in the United States started around 1619. Isn't that interesting? It's like the whole thing, persecution, slavery, whatever you want to call it, jumped over, the, over here. Just a couple years difference, and slavery becomes built up in six, 1776. It's legal, and it's legal all the way up until 1865, and then for the next hundred years, there's still been persecution. I don't know how people think of that's going on today, but for the next season, there's still been persecution following what was like. So I don't know if that makes any sense to you, but it it, it was interesting to me. Here we have Anabaptists. And then the whole principality or the attack jumps from killing Anabaptists to brutalizing another people group. 
interesting. However, the slave, the trauma of all of this stuff, the, the slavery, the persecution, the execution, whatever it is, that relief, that affects people's emotional and spiritual um, being for generations and centuries. And so we are directly a result of all of that stuff that was happening back then. And I believe a lot of people have still lived that slave mindset. Here's a word. Here's a, here's, how many of you are you familiar with this prayer at a prayer meeting? Lord, we just thank you that we're able to worship here freedom and, and freedom and not being pursued by the, the, the land. How many of you recognize that prayer? Yeah. Why in the world would you pray that? Because at one point in time, it was very real. And when that persecution let up, all of a sudden we're like, Whew, thank you, Jesus. We're so grateful. And you know what? Here we are hundreds of years later. And we still hear that prayer. Thank you, Father. Just thank you so much that we can worship in freedom. It's, we are still being influenced by what happened back then. Wow. That, uh, this ends up that um, people who have been abused by the system no longer trust government or their leaders in the government. They no longer trust the medical world. They no longer trust the education world. And I look at that and I just laugh. Look at, look at, look at our background of people don't generally trust the government, don't generally trust the medical world, don't generally trust the education system. But we've been hurt. And we said, oh, we're not sure about that. So, I'd like to jump ahead. What does a slave think like? How does a slave think? If we realize that we have some slave mentality, how does a slave think? Well, let's go down our list here. They will tell you, never lift your head or make eye contact. This is a slave. Never be yourself or speak your mind. You just do what you're told. If you do, you're going to suffer consequences. You just do what, do what I say. Don't you question me. You're trained not to have a voice and not to have an opinion. Wow. You're told what to do. That's a slave. You're punished at the owner's will. And you're reminded of your lowly position. Stay down there. Don't learn to read and write. Don't get higher education. Because they know that if the slave learns those things, then he can change. And he wants to change. They will break your will so that you obey without question. And you are programmed to see yourself as inferior not equal. Take that straight to the Baptist people. Are you an equal? Are you programmed to see yourself as inferior and less than? You are programmed to follow, not think, not lead. You follow. Wow. You don't dare question your authorities. Because they are the voice. The voice of God. You are beaten into submission, and you are to be seen but not heard. Now these are all directly related to slaves, and if you're like me, you're like, wow, that just sounds like my background. I didn't have any slave in my background. A slave is a person who is willing to serve in another in exchange for basic comforts as opposed to earning for themselves. That's just the dictionary definition of a slave. A slave unknowingly remains a prisoner and is not truly free. But I'm convinced there's some more definitions other than that, but that's what the dictionary said. So let's go back to the Bible in Exodus, where the, where the children of Israel were slaves. In Exodus, Exodus uh, 4, verse 11, the children of Israel come up to Moses and they said, Is it because there are no graves in Egypt? that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness. What is this that you have done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? The children of Israel were slaves in the land of Egypt for 400 years. Got that? 400 years of slavery. God miraculously brings them out, 
miraculously splits the water. They walk through all these ten plagues behind them. So much destruction to the enemy, to the Egyptians. They get out of there. They go across. There's manna. There's birds coming down. There's water coming out of rocks. There's miracle after miracle after miracle. And guess what the children of Israel say? Moses, you brought us out here in the desert. There's no leeks and garlics. There's no grapes for us to bury our dead in peace in. We would rather go back to Egypt than slavery. See that? Yeah, I know you brought us out of slavery, but now that we're out here and we have to face life and make our own decisions, we want to go back. We don't like this. Why? Because we got to think. We got to leave. We got to make decisions. There was a girl that was being sex trafficked in a certain, I forget which nation it was, and they got her out of there. Brought her into a different nation. They said, you're free now. You can be whatever you want to be. She said, I don't know what I want to be. I said, you tell me, what should I be? No, they said, you decide. What do you want to be? Her will was so broken, she didn't know what she wanted to be. They said, let's start simply. Okay, what color is your favorite color? I don't know. Pick one for me. Her will was so broken to just follow and do that she couldn't make any basic decisions. She didn't even know what she preferred. It, she didn't know what her color she liked. She said for the next four or half year, whatever it was, her intense desire and attempt was to escape back to where she was being sex trafficked. That felt better to her than to have to stand up and actually think and make a decision for herself. That felt safer. Are you getting how programmed people get in the slave mentality? Don't think. Don't question. Don't challenge. Just do. Just follow. Just, just be. Be stupid. Be inferior. Be less. And, and be a nobody. Then you don't have to think. You just do. Wow. I don't really like that picture. But I see way too much of it in the in the uh, religious settings where we say, don't think, just do. And we put a pedestal up and there's leaders and they, have, they are the voice of God and everybody else must do what they're told. Now we're breaking out of that, I understand. But I still believe there's a whole lot of slavery mindset in there that is still, still coming with and we're trying to get rid of it. And what does it look like to get rid of it? What's it look like to get free of those chains and actually still have leaders that we honor and they can be the voice of God and the rest of everybody else is the voice of God also and has a connection to God and authority with God. So after 400 years of slavery, children of Israel wanted to go back. Wow. They were, they were not ready to taste making their own decisions face life like that. It's incredible. Wanted to go back to slavery, where the slavery had been amped up to the point where they had to go find their own straw. They had to build way more. They were in intense slavery and beating at that point, and they still wanted to go back to it. The slave mentality does two things, from my perspective, my look, looking at this. It limits you because of how you see yourself. And we're going to take us into the, your walk with God. You're going to have a slave mentality. You're going to be limited because of how you see yourself. If you cannot see yourself as God sees you, you are, well, if, you're not going to have any self-worth. And if you cannot accept who God made you to be, you're not going to be comfortable around God. I'm going to repeat that. If you cannot accept who God made you to be, there's a part of you that is not going to be comfortable around God and in His presence because He is calling you to be something different than what you see yourself as. And so when we get around God and God's people, they should we should be being called out and up to be who God called us to be. Wow. What a slave mentality. If you see yourself... It limits how you see yourself. You don't see yourself as God sees you. You feel like you have no self-worth. You feel like a victim. You're stuck in this system. And you do not see yourself as an overcomer or a victor. You feel the need to depend on other people for your freedom. 
Remember the Israelites? They wanted to go into the promised land and send some spies in. And the spies came back saying, these people are giants and we're just like grasshoppers. That was their still their perspective. God had shown them miracle after miracle coming out of Egypt. They've seen God work in amazing ways. Now God says, go take the promised land. These, we're grasshoppers compared to these people. Their mindset was still, we are less than, and we cannot overcome. We are not victorious. We need somebody else to help us to get to what God has given us. Now, I want you to know that you, you, uh, do, we do need each other, but you're gonna, we are going to have to step up and say, God can give us, God can walk with us. If he's telling you this is for us, he can help us get it. We have to believe it. A slave mind that does not agree with who God says you are, does not walk in faith, and without faith you cannot please God. So if you're living from this thing of a slave mindset, you're not going to be able to walk out in faith. Because you don't trust God, and the Bible says if you don't trust God, you don't have faith, you can't even please God. So we're trying to live for God without faith, and we're not even pleasing God. How well do you think that's going to work? It's going to produce what we call a religious system. We just do it because it's the right thing, but we don't have faith. Ouch. Unless this slave mindset is changed, we're never going to be able to inherit the promised land that God has for each of us. Each of us. We see so many Christians pledging allegiance to the Lamb, saying, I want that. Believing experiencing salvation, but not being able to enter in and access the more. Not able to go into the promised land and live what God says, to walk and to experience the what God has for us, to live, what's he say, go into the world, you're supposed to, these things are going to follow those who believe, people are going to be healed, they're going to be delivered, all of these things are going to follow those who believe. Why don't God's people access that living? Because they haven't crossed over they haven't crossed over in the promised land. They're still living as a slave in the desert. Are you going to have to kick? We're going to have to kick that slave mentality. It's got to go. It's got to go because I believe we're in a season, we're in a time where we can't live like slaves anymore. That stuff might come against us again. Who knows? But we dare not live as slaves. We're going to have to step out in faith. We're going to have to trust again. We're going to have to step forward believing and knowing who God says we are no matter what happens. We're going to have to live from that place. And so I believe God's people need to do a radical mindset that shift from slave mentality to sonship. So how does this, what, what does it take to break free? Two truths. Know your identity in Christ. Number one, know your son and live it. If you're a son of the King, the living God who loves you and has died for you, you have access to his kingdom. Number two is know your authority in Christ. So now we know that we're a son and we know our identity. Number two, we need to know the authority that God says we have. What authority do we have? Well, we're supposed to cast out demons. We're supposed to take authority over the principality. We're supposed to do these things. We're supposed to walk in love and power and authority. Confidence and Godfidence. I like the word Godfidence. We're supposed to walk in Godfidence. What? It's not actually. But I like it. Sonship changes not only how you see God, but it changes how you relate to him. You see yourself as a son of God, you relate to him differently. He's your father, you relate to him as dad, and you have love for him. And you, you live, love, and accept him every day. Quick question, do you wake up to love other people, or do you wake up with a void in your heart desiring other people to come love on you? Think about it. It's going to tell you where you're at in this journey. If you wake up wanting, desiring other people to love on you and care about you, give you a word. Or do you wake up and you just have love to give up, give out, and you want to love your children, you want to love the people you meet. 
a son who knows the love that is in him from his father, and he has some to give everybody else. Flowing from him. And there's a verse. Galatians 4, 7. Therefore, you're no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. You're no longer a slave. You're called a son. Okay, here's the verse. Yes. But I thought we were all to be sir, sir, uh, slaves. I thought we were supposed to be slaves. Are we supposed to go out and serve everybody and live for God and give our lives and all of this stuff? Are we called to be slaves? What do you think? I'm trying to tell you to get out of the slave mindset and go to the sons. But every time we go there, somebody pops up and says, yeah, but we're called to be slaves. We're supposed to live as a slave in this earth. There is one verse that I have that actually says that. And I, I, I talked about that last time I, I preached. Um, here's, here's the verse, Mark 10, 45. The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. So aren't we called to come and to serve and give our life for many? Do you like Jesus did? Yes, but there is a catch. You can only truly serve as a son. See, the slave does not have access to the father's kingdom. Slaves do not have access to the master's house. They sleep in the bunkhouse. They don't have access to the master's tools. You want to come? I want something from you and you're a slave. You don't have you can't borrow it to me. Because you don't have access. If you're a son, you have access to the refrigerator. If you're a son, you have access to the tool house, tool shed. I can, you can hand things out. Yeah, this is my this is my dad's game. You can have this. Yeah, be healed. Get delivered. Give. You have freely. You have as a son freely give. That's fun. But if you're a slave, you try to freely give, and now you don't get anything given because you don't have access, and it's really frustrating. And people say this isn't worth it. This I don't like this life. Christian life don't work. You're right. It don't work as a slave. We need to get that mindset. As a slave, the Christian life is not going to work for you. As a son, it will. I'm pretty convinced about this. Because I've lived so long as a slave, that when I started tapping into sonship, and experiencing the real, so, wow. Do you ever feel exhausted? You're giving and you're working. The Lord's working. You feel drained. You feel exhausted. Why? Because you're living as a slave. If you don't have anything to give, and you're trying to give, give, give all day, you give this love that's not in there, you're upset anyway. You give uh, patience and all this stuff, and it's not in there. You're just smiling and putting on a good face, enjoying the Christian thing, but it's not in there. The life of Christ is not able to flow through you. You're going to be come to the end of your day drained and exhausted because you did the right thing, but you didn't have access. Does this make any sense? Jesus doesn't normally refer to his followers as servants or slaves, but his preferred terminology is sons. He calls us from slavery into sonship repeatedly. Going through the New Testament, he's saying, I call you to be sons. I don't want you to be slaves anymore. I want you to be sons. Come out of the slavery mindset. Be a son. So. I um where are we at here? I believe that we have two camps in the Christian church. We have the slavery camp and we have the sonship camp. And those two camps don't get along together. <laughs> you get that? <laughs> Well, yeah, but it's a completely different mindset way of thinking. And so if you're living as a son, and you say, I have access. I I have, I am loved. I am okay with who God made me. I like who God made me to be. It's fun. I can run. I want to go do this. And the other camp is saying, no, I'm a nobody. I don't deserve God's love. I'm a nothing. And, uh, yeah, I don't have anything to give out. We shouldn't believe in healing. We shouldn't believe. That was just for the disciples way back then. 
you put those two camps together and they're going to try to do church together, <laughs> we've got a problem. It don't work. And the one group says, Yes, you got your message coming. The one group says, Hey, you guys think you're sons? You're all worked up about your identity and who God says you are? You guys are arrogant. Look at that. You're outright arrogant of who you say God is. You should be this lowly servant over here. Well, I agree about being a servant, son, servant, but I don't agree about this lowly word. We identify, we, Christ is in us. Is Christ a lowly servant? No. He's God, and he calls us sons. That's not lowly. Now, we're not supposed to walk in arrogance and pride. We're supposed to walk in confidence. Whew. The slavery mindset people look at the sons and they say, you're not true sons because of your arrogance. We are the true sons because we are humble. And the sonship side looks at the slavery mindset side and says, you guys aren't true sons. Because you're still living as a slave. You don't even have access. You don't even know what you're talking about. Yeah, so we grow. There is growth. And uh, there is time, there is, it's okay to transition. The four-year-old son doesn't have the same access as the 20-year-old son or a 16-year-old son. Neither yeah. does the rebellious son have the same access as the obedient yeah. uh, son. And so that goes back to responsibility. How much are you able to respond to? Yes. Yeah. 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 Wow. The religious spirit will have you believe that only slaves can enter the kingdom and the slaves are the true sons. Now, here's the catch that really hit me. Um, the spirit of religion is not the problem. For so many years, we've been bl blaming the spirit of religion. These people are just religious. They have a spirit of religion. You know what the problem is? Slave your mindset. Not the religious spirit. I like to take that religious spirit and blame off the religious spirit. And I want to put the our sights on the slavery mindset. If you live from the slavery mindset, you're going to empower the religious spirit. But once you kick the slavery mindset and live in who God says you are, you're going to walk in authority. You're going to, yeah. So why do the Anabaptist people traditionally not able to access kingdom authority? Access and operate in it. I always thought it was a religious spirit. They did. But traditionally now, you start looking around, I want to see you want to see people flowing in the spirit, you're gonna go over to the Pentecostal movement. Okay. And they're the sons. They know who they are. They're confident in their identity in Christ. And we look at some of their stuff, say, ah, that don't quite line up, uh, yeah, but they know who they are. Their sons. And so they are able to access. And so we come along as the Anabaptists and we're getting our eyes dotted and T's crossed and we don't seem to have access to them. Why? That's the question that plagued me ever since I was 15 years old. I wanted to become a Christian. I wanted to become a part of our church. But I said, at 15, I looked at this and I said, we don't have the book of Acts had. I don't know if I want this. I told my parents, I want 
I probably won't grow up and be part of this church. I want to become a member here and a Christian because I think that's my step. But I want to go where the real stuff is. I, I don't want to be stuck in this thing. I don't know. I look back and laugh. No, I don't know what they thought. <laughs> but they let it. They, they uh, didn't say. What's that? <laughs> but I wanted the real deal. I wanted the real deal. I was convinced there's a real deal out there that we weren't tapping into it. And now I see that the real deal is simply the, well, from where I'm seeing it now, simply the uh, slave mentality. And we're kicking out of it. The, the real thing that we're up against. Thank you. The real thing that we're up against is the slave mentality. The real deal is the sonship mentality. And so the religious spirit then isn't even the problem. It's the slavery mindset. Find out who you are in Christ and you're going to kick all of those things. A son simply believes that the words and the promises of his father simply believes what his dad says. And put trust as a little child. Remember it says you cannot enter the kingdom unless you come as a little child. I believe it's talking about you cannot enter sonship. Unless you trust as a little child. We are talking about faith here the other day. Um, how do you step into faith? You simply have to trust. You're going to have to take your eyes off with the problem and what you're looking at. Put your eyes on God and trust like a little child. For anything that you're walking in, whether it's huge mountains or whatever, or just a wheel of the next step. You're simply going to have to take your eyes off of what looks impossible and put your eyes on God and walk forward and trust as a little child. That's what it takes to be a son. That's what it takes to enter the kingdom. When refusing to submit to slavery, uh, we need to do this while we refuse to submit to slavery mentality feelings. There's all kinds of feelings that are going to rise up that say, yeah, but this, that, and the other thing. We're going to have to resist those feelings and simply trust and believe the truth of God. So, Slaves must get desperate for their freedom. Right? How many of you have watched the movie Harriet? Incredible movie. If you haven't watched it, I recommend you go watch it. I, I absolutely loved it. And she, she um, Harriet found freedom because she had a desire to. She was desperate for freedom. Then she went back to free her family and her husband and other people. Get them out of there. And her husband was already free, I believe, but not living free from slavery, but in the persecution side of it, if I can say it that way. And he says, I'm happy here. I married another wife. I don't want to go with you. She would start pulling her brothers and other people out and taking them with her. And they would go so far. And then they would say, you know what? This is too dangerous. We're scared. We want to go back to our masters. They'll take care of us. Uh-uh. No, they won't. You have to get to a place uh, uh, where you give me liberty or give me death. Now, I don't want to use those words, but give me liberty or I will die trying. That's where these slaves had to get to. Give me freedom or I will die trying to get there. It's one or the other. And I believe a Christian has to get to that point where I'm going to set my eyes on freedom in Christ. That's who I'm called to be. That's who I will be. I'm going to go for all I got. So, if you de if people aren't desperate for that freedom, don't even believe it's an option. Don't even know they can go there. They're not going to push through. And so, with Harriet, they they were getting tired on their journey. She was in the middle of the bridge, or as the movie showed it, she's in the middle of the bridge, and the slave owner, slave traders or owners were coming up the edge of the bridge, and they're saying, "Just come back." We'll take you back in. Everything's going to be okay. We'll treat you nicely. You know what they were going to do? They're going to kill her or else beat her to beat her up badly. We knew that. She knew that. However, there was the temptation of, well, uh, let's just go back and see what happens. I want you to know that when we go out and we choose freedom and we say, yes, this is what we want, we take steps that direction, there is no going back. The devil is watching you. When you step out and you say, I want freedom. I'm going to give it all I got for freedom. I pledge allegiance to the Lamb. 
when we're seeing this area here and we start going that direction, and then we say, whoa, wait a minute, this is too hard. No, I guess that's not for us today after all. The devil's going to come in and he's going to beat you up. And you won't know why. Because you made some declarations. So there are some mindsets of uh, sonship. So I don't, I'm not going to spend much of time on these, but I want to breeze through them. What is it? What are the mindsets of a son, a true son? Number one, they are convinced of the love and the goodness of God. They know they're loved, they know they're accepted. Number two, they live extremely confident in who they are and who God says they are. Number three, they have a big God mindset. Big God mindset. This is what God says we can do. We believe God can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Do we live that way? Big God mindset. Number four, a tron, son, these are not in order, they're just the way I put them down. A son has incredible trust. The ability to just trust dad as a little child. Can you trust? Number five, sons love to better other people. It's not just about me, it's about you. It's about bringing other, everybody else with us. We want everybody else to get this, access this walk and this also. Sons love to listen, do not listen to the enemy's accusations. How many of you have some people that bring in accusations against you? Sons don't listen to that. Why jump in the mud puddle and, and splash around the mud puddle when you know it's not even, there's nothing there. It's always just a bunch of accusations. Don't, they don't listen to it. They just move on confidently. Um, sons surpass common expectations. We over, in all things, we overwhelmingly conquer through Him who loves us. Romans eight thirty seven. Romans eight thirty seven. In all things, all things, we overwhelmingly conquer. That's all things. Wow. Thank you. Sons are gonna surpass the common expectations, and sons carry an unshakable hope about the future. There's your test right now, I believe. We're looking around us and we're seeing what everything that's going on and we're saying, wow, we can get scared. I remember from as young as I can remember being taught and told about the end times and how things are going to blow up and the Christians are all going to have their heads cut off and, and uh, basically we're going to come to a place where the Christians are extinct and then God's going to come back. That was the thing I was being taught and hammered. And so all my life, I'm like, well, is this the end times? Is this the end times? You know what? A true son lives with an unshakable hope about the future. So we can trust God, and God's going to come through, and we're just going to keep, we're not afraid to step out and, and live because we believe in God. And sons rise up, and they grow through hardship. How many of you have never experienced hardship? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being honest. Everybody experiences hardship. But what are you going to do with it? A true son is going to say, okay, I'm going to trust God. The revelation from God, I'm going to go forward. And they're going to grow through that. After you come through hardship, how many of you experience what God was trying to tell you? After we got through hardship, then we see it. We get, and and uh, we grow. That's sonship. Sons are not limited by their own weaknesses. We tend to focus on what we're weak at and not good at and then downplay ourselves. Well, a son is going to focus on what he's good at, the gifts that God has given him, what he's good at, and then walk that out. Don't focus on what you're not good at. Focus on what God has given you. That's what a son will do. So, the last one I have is sons take responsibility for everything they think, say, feel, or do. Sons are going to take responsibility for their life, and they're going to pick up responsibility for everything else in their life that God asks them to take up responsibility for. This is not exhaustive, but this is a good start. We pick this stuff up, it's going to change our life from living as a slave to living as a son. So I bless you guys. So be sons.
as I, one of these guys said, don't, let's not just try to be men or be like men, let's be men. And the youth board did one of these guys said, let's not try to be like men, let's be men. I said it about sonship. Let's, let's not just try to be sons. Let's be sons. Let's live acceptance. Let's live love. Let's live the sonship mindset. So God bless you guys. See you later.